I put a lot of pressure on love and romance throughout my life. It started in really middle school and throughout high school and college. My most difficult bout with sexual anxiety came coincidentally between the ages of 19 and 22. This was at a time where we were supposed to be incredibly active, right? I mean, you're in college. I can honestly say being in college and believing that I had that expectation upon me because really it was only there because I put it on myself. It's not like people were banging down my door trying to figure out who I was having sex with on a daily basis. Placing that expectation upon myself that because I was in college, I had to be active, I had to be super horny all the time, my hormones had to be going crazy. It definitely sort of compounded the frustrations and pressures of the sexual anxiety that I was working through. And that, I think, is a big active word here. And that's pressure. A lot of sexual anxiety that I had came from putting unnecessary pressure on myself. Sex is supposed to be something enjoyable and fun to be done by two or more parties. And yet there I was thinking it out to be some kind of fight or flight, intense pressure-based, performance-based situation. Beyond that, I just downplayed how difficult it was for me. And we'll get into why opening up is helpful a little later on in the video, but I was kind of half opening. I was explaining the problem, but I didn't really talk with my friends or anybody about how deeply it really affected me. So I'm choosing to go on YouTube to do it. What's up guys, editing Zane here. I just wanted to say, I'm glad that I am going on YouTube and doing this because I think it's honestly helping me work on my sexual anxiety a good bit. By opening up about it, as I will mention in the future, I'm taking even more ownership of it. And I'm saying that this is something I've went through, something I'm still working on, but I'm gonna be open about it and hopefully I can help some other people in doing so. I shouldn't have been valuing my worth based on if I was able to perform in a sexual situation or not. That's kind of a negative cycle in and of itself because the more you do that, the more pressure you're gonna put on yourself to perform and then you're not gonna perform because you're putting too much pressure on yourself. And it's just, it just goes around and goes around. I can say, you know, 110%, sexual anxiety had a serious negative impact on my sex life from when I was 19 up until honestly about six months ago. Bang, bang. But around six months ago up to now is when I've seen legitimate serious changes in my sex life, in my sexual anxiety, and in my mindset surrounding it all. I am here today to talk to you guys about the changes that I made that helped me overcome my sexual anxiety so that if any of you guys are dealing with it or anything like it, hopefully this video can help you to work through it just like I did. And I think that the points I make will help for more than just sexual anxiety. I think they can apply to social anxiety if you're a procrastinator, if you want to start a new habit or quit a new habit. To give you a quick intro on me, I'm Zane. I'm a 22 year old creator. I'm from Virginia, but I currently live in Orlando, Florida. And recently I've wanted to question what my real desire is with the videos that I create and the content I create. What I want to do is learn the line between self-development and self-improvement and entertainment and media. I want to create a community around improving and developing ourselves in healthy, fun, and entertaining ways. If that's a community that you're interested in being a part of, the subscribe button is your sign up form and the like button is your entry fee. So appreciate it guys. Let's get on to three major points that I have for you guys on how I overcame my sexual anxiety and hopefully how you can too. This first point is something that can be applied to so many different areas of your life. Sexual anxiety, social anxiety, procrastination, starting a new habit, whatever it may be. This is a very important point that I believe everybody should do on a daily basis, regardless of what you're going through or what you're trying to get over. That idea that I wanna to introduce to you guys is questioning your narratives. So with my sexual anxiety, it had a bit of a compounding effect. The longer I went without having sex, the worse I thought my anxiety was. Between the age of 19 and 22, I probably went about a year and a half to two years or so without getting with anybody. In that time, the longer that I went without having sex with anyone, the worse I thought my sexual anxiety was. And it sucks because it was almost like the more books I read or the more articles I read, videos I watched, the worse it would get because I was thinking, man, I'm absorbing all this knowledge. I think I'm learning all these things. Why is nothing changing? Why haven't I got with anybody yet? It had a negative compounding cyclical effect 
It was a circle, okay? It was a circle. The thing is though, having sexual anxiety is a narrative. We believe we have it due to our past experiences with it and with its surrounding aspects, sex itself, obviously, and also the thought patterns that we have about it. I believe that I had sexual anxiety because when I had gotten with girls in the past, I couldn't get it up because I was putting so much pressure on myself to get it up, to perform. In reality, guys, the issue was when I put all that pressure on myself, and I wasn't able to perform, sexual anxiety began to grow within me. Eventually it became this huge mountain and I realized I needed to question the base of that mountain. And so I started questioning my sexual anxieties and the things that made me anxious about having sex, like past experiences that didn't go well. I questioned, was it really that bad? I'm still here, I'm okay. Maybe I was a little embarrassed at the time, but once you question those stories in your head, those narratives that you believe are the rock solid truth, you start to realize that a lot of the things you're telling yourself are, what's the word? I wasn't paying attention in my eighth grade English. Hyperboles, you tell yourself overly negative stories about what happened. Stroke game zero fool. You're about to let this negative experience create a false narrative for the rest of your sex life and that's on baby. Now to reverse that process, like I said, you'll start questioning it. Let's say whatever happens, I can't finish, I can't give it up. So what's the big deal? Maybe we do some cuddling, put a movie on or something. I got other tools at my disposal. You know, maybe I use Look into your thoughts and say, hey, I don't have to think this way. I don't have to put so much pressure on this situation. If you can question those narratives that you have for yourself and your anxiety, a lot of times you'll realize that it is just that. It's just a narrative. And you can change that narrative by questioning it and coming to realize that it's just not true. And it's an overly negative version of the truth. My next point, and this Boom. is a huge one. It's a little scary, but you guys should, point number two, communicate about it. Like I said, whatever? Fuck this guy! Lewis House is a self-development guy that I really like a lot. And he has a podcast called The School of Greatness. A point that he makes, and I'm going to paraphrase it, it's in a financial episode about money. And he says, people who are comfortable with money tend to just kind of attract more money to them. And that means people who can talk about money, even if they don't have much of it, more money will come to them. Because by talking about money, they become more comfortable with money. And people who are comfortable with money just tend to get more money. Just kind of a general statement, but it's one that I believe applies just as well to sex. With any sexual partner you may have, even with friends, talk to them about your insecurities and talk to them about your sexual anxiety. Because when we hide it and we don't tell anybody about it, we are reinforcing an idea in our head that says, I'm never gonna fix this. And I don't want anybody to know about it because if they do, then they'll see my scar. They'll see my scar that's never gonna heal. The reality is by opening up and talking more about it, you're taking ownership of it. And I believe you're subconsciously reinforcing the idea in yourself that is, I'm gonna tell other people about this because I know that I'm gonna get through it. You are saying, hey, I can tell other people about it because I know this is not a forever scar that's never gonna heal that will always negatively affect my character. Whether you want to talk to your friend or a therapist or your YouTube channel, I think opening up about your sexual anxiety and about any anxiety you may have is so beneficial. The third idea is what I call the 23 in one rule. And yo, 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 editing Zane here again. I wanted to record this clip because I've been editing the video and I'm down to the last rule, which in this case is the 23 and one rule, like I mentioned. And I have like eight minutes of footage and I realize there's literally a rule I created and I think I can explain it a bit more concisely than over an eight minute span. Well, the 23 and one rule essentially is it pertains to the 24 hours of the day. The 23 is the whole day, most uh, other than the one hour. And the one hour is basically the problem you have, whether that be your social anxiety, your sexual anxiety. If you want to show up better in one thing in your life, be it improving upon your social anxiety, sexual anxiety, whatever it may be, that's that one. A huge part of how you show up in that one hour or that one situation will be decided based on the other 23 hours of your day. From a sexual standpoint, if you are going on a sexual encounter with somebody 
and you spent the day eating like crap, not doing the things that you said you were going to do or doing things that were generally healthy for you mentally, physically, and so forth, how are you expecting you're gonna show up in a sexual situation with that on top of the fact that you already have some sexual anxiety that you're working through? If I'm gonna be honest with you guys, kind of shine the spotlight on you, if you're watching this video, there's a decent possibility that you might have some things you need to question, which that is not a pointed statement at all. It's up to us individually to make those 23 hours of the day better to improve upon that one area that we feel hinders us the most. That's kind of my rule that I try to apply to myself every day, especially when I think about specific things that are hindering me. I try to think about how I can improve in other areas so that I have more confidence, more energy to attack the situation that I feel is my sort of Achilles heel. Guys, I really appreciate you watching. Bless up. It was a lot of fun and it was honestly kind of raw and vulnerable for me to make this video. I hope that I can help some of you guys in your journey and your path with working on your anxieties and your issues and so forth. Drop a comment below. Let me know if you enjoyed this kind of video and if you want me to maybe touch on a different subject, whether it be more social anxiety or time management, because that's something I've been working on a lot. This channel is not gonna be a straight improvement channel. I'm gonna be making some entertainment, kind of vlogs and things like that as well. It's not just gonna be straight self-improvement, it's just gonna be my life too, because I wanna share you know, both of those things with you guys. I hope this video helps everybody's sexual anxiety get kicked to the curb, all right? Go get freaky, screw the anxiety, baby. We're all gonna be all right. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe, and I'm gonna catch you on the next video. Peace.